Did you watch the Jordan Peterson episode with Muhammad Hijab? Would you review it, please? At least the part where they talk about the scope of peace. Okay. In Islam. I, I was it. I was gonna watch I was gonna watch it with Susanna. So I was I saw it and I'm like, I'm not gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch this with Susanna. And this and today Susanna was like, I already watched it. So Well, you didn't communicate that to me. I assumed you would be thinking the same oh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um so no, I have not watched it, but apparently one of us already has. So I Consider well, I watched it in preparation for today because I knew people were going to ask us about it, Armin. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. So, uh, <laughs> do you think you're going to do a review of it? Because you were talking about doing that earlier. Maybe, maybe. I'm having so much fun going after Hinduism, but we'll fun. see. Yes, it's yes. pretty easy too. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just to give my quick impression, um, you know, I appreciated how. Jordan Peterson really was like, you could tell he really went into that conversation with good faith and it just reflected how I think he's a really nice person. Um, even though I disagree with him. Um, and I felt like he could have asked more specific questions about the problems in Islam. Um, he, I mean, this is his want, like it got very into kind of, um, uh, meta narratives of Islam, um, instead of being like, wait, this specific like policy or mandate contradicts what you're saying here. Wait a second. Um, but there were also a couple funny moments to it. So if you guys haven't seen on apostate prophets channel, actually, maybe we should watch it right now. That'd be so much fun. No, that's fine because we have too many questions. We could, we could do a three. No, no, it's it like later. it's like a, it's less than a minute long though. AP mm. did a very quick edit. It's so funny. I want to see. No, 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 wait. No, no, no. Let's do it later. Let's do it later because I want to oh, um, compare that. No, no. Let's do it later. Let's do it later. I want to do it later. Um, I want to compare that to. I, I saw AP's edit of it, but I also saw Muhammad Hijab posting a short clip and I do want to do that side by side next to each other to compare them with each other because that's very interesting. I do want to, I haven't like, even though I haven't watched it yet, I do want to say I'm expecting Jordan Peterson to just have an assumption. Like the way I think Jordan Peterson thinks about these things is that when you talk about middle narratives, right? He looks at these like religions and fictions and stories and myths as if there was like a purposeful plan ahead of time to construct something like Christianity, Islam, or the Greek mythology, or Pinoc Pinocchio, or whatever, or Peter Pan. You know, like, to set the foundations of like a civilization. Like it, it, it's the, to me, it seems like it's the other way around. To me, it seems like the 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 myths are the result of the foundations of civilizations. Like they're not they're not their roots. They're like a mirror. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not like they're not like the foundations of the building, and then the building is built upon them based on what the narratives are purposefully there to make society you know it's not like a blueprint it's not like certain people got to like oh here's the blueprint of islam or christianity or greek mythology or pinocchio or peter pan and now let's like make society reflect our blueprint right it's not a blueprint it's a mirror right it's more like the foundations of civilizations organically evolve the way they are and you see a reflection of what they were, what people cared about in the myths that they create. So the myths are helpful in for us to, to 
educate ourselves and to investigate to see what do what do these people's goals were what were their fears about what how did they saw the role of this or that or this person or father in society or the slave or blah blah, blah right that's what the myths are useful for it's not like useful to see like let's see how these people purposefully decided to build the foundations of their you know so when he when jordan peterson i'm assuming i'm i don't know i'm gonna watch that later when he looks at Islam and he's like, what is the meta narrative? He's trying to see what was like this the div, div, semi divine or goal of the people who decided to sit together to make these, uh, this the myth as if they were thinking about the world today, like as if they were thinking about a thousand years from now, as if they were thinking about like not. What, what was actually happening, which makes myths an, a, a reflection of the values of the time, was just internal politics, right? It was just like internal discussions between tribes. Like if this story gets merged with this story, it's more of a reflection of short-term needs specific to that time, these two tribes getting together. Or if this story tells that these people are evil, it's because these people had a problem with those people and now it's reflecting in their stories. It's more immediate. It was more short term. It was more selfish and um, more political than what Jordan Peterson tends to. Like, just go compare, for example, the way Jordan Peterson talks about the New Testament and then go look at actual history about how the New Testament was created. You know, in the, go look at like scholars like Bart Ehrman and see how they discuss how, how the New Testament came into be. It's not at all the way Jordan Peterson imagines it. It's not at all that like that. It's not at all like this, you know, yeah. So I'm assuming the way he investigates Islam when he, if he questions uh, Muhammad Hijab is to try to find the middle narratives the same way uh, that was the foundation the same way he thinks about Islam like he's going to probe him I'm assuming he probed him in a way to get into that as if you know yes. instead of looking at the pol political nature behind what the what made Islam the way it is you know what I mean am, am I correct about that that's what he was trying to get right okay yeah so I haven't even watched that I know where this is going yeah I know it's it's really interesting because like flat out the gate they make what is I guess basically a type of naturalistic fallacy like straight away i don't know it seemed so obvious to me they're talking about different studies about our propensity towards um a belief in a higher power and how this is um seemingly observed in early childhood where i would need to go look into those studies myself because i had some serious questions about that but just because they're talking about they're like oh well i think an instinctual argument is much better than a, um, a propositional argument I'm like just because we have an instinct towards something that doesn't actually make it true outside of ourselves like that's so obvious to me um this is the this is basically the same problem that we had with like rationalism instead of empiricism like these people are just like you have like religious scholars actually going and looking for evidence to see how these stories came about and then you have people like jordan peterson that are just sitting and like well this feels like this to me and like okay sure uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think it was it All was right. interesting though. Um, Jordan Peterson's reaction to Muhammad Hijab reciting the Quran was also hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I. That's what I want to. That's the part that I want to review. That has been. That has been. I think the way he was basically Muhammad like, Hijab, "Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> why did you do that to me? Why did you do that to me? No, yes, I have like, to say okay. something. Who?" set up Muhammad Hijab's audio. His audio is shit the entire time. And he's sitting in front of an expensive microphone. I'm like, who mm. did this? Like, what's the point of putting all this money into this microphone when you sound like shit and Jordan Peterson sounds like he's sitting right next to you. So the contrast is so stark. It was annoying me so much the whole time. And I know it's going to really piss you off, Armin. Okay, okay. let's get to it. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship.
Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.